figure above shows the graph of the piecewise linear function f. For x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to 12, the function g is defined by g of x equals the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. a. Does g have a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at x equals 10? So, there's g has a relative minimum or maximum when g prime is going from positive to negative, or g prime is going from negative to positive. Um, so g prime of x equals f of x, because that's the derivative of the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. So if g prime of x equals f of x, we just have to see if f of x is changing sign at x equals 10, and then we'll know if there's a minimum or maximum. And at x equals 10, um, f is 0, but it's not changing sign. So the answer is neither. There's not a minimum or a maximum, um, because g prime of x equals f of x and f of x is not changing sign at x equals 10. Does the graph of g have a point of inflection at x equals 4? Justify your answer. So, um, just like g prime of x has to be changing sign in order for there to be a maximum or minimum, in order for there to be a point of inflection, g double prime of x must be changing signs. So before we said that g prime of x equals f of x, which means that g double prime of x is going to equal f prime of x. So we just have to see if f prime of x is changing sign at x equals 4. Um, and we have 4 right there. And f prime of x is changing sign because it's going from positive to negative, like increasing to decreasing. Um, so there is a point of inflection. Because g double prime of x equals f prime of x, and f prime of x is changing sign at x equals 4. Find the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value of g on the interval um, x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to 12. Justify your answers. So, um, g of x has a minimum when it's changing signs, where, or when g prime of x is changing signs. And that happens at, um, what happens when f of x is changing signs. Yeah, and that happens at x is negative 2 and x equals 6. And then we should also check the endpoints because those are possibilities. Oops, negative 4. And so then we just have to find um, g at all of these values. So g of negative 2 equals. Um, it's the integral from 2 to negative 2 of f of t dt. Um, so let's just write in the area of these triangles. This is 8. This one is negative 8. Negative 4. 8. Um, negative 4. Okay, so g of negative 2 um, is the integral from 2 to negative 2. 
And since we're going backwards, we have to, that's the same as the integral from negative 2 to 2, except negative. So that's going to be negative 8. g of 6, um, the area from 2 to 6 is 8. g of negative 4, um, we're going backwards, so we have to do negative again. So it's going to be negative, oh, it is negative 8, and then minus 4. So that's negative 4. And g of 12 is 8 minus 8 minus 4. So that's also negative 4. So um, absolute min occurs, no, just, we have to find the absolute minimum value. So absolute minimum value is negative 8. Absolute maximum value is 8. For x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to 12, find all intervals for which g of x is less than 0. Um, so we can just kind of look at this. This one going from 2 to negative 4, that's always negative because you're subtracting 8 here and then the most that you add is 4. So you know that from negative 4 to 2 is less than 0. And then here it's greater than 0, and you're subtracting, but it's still greater than 0. Become 0 at um, x is 10, because you have 8 minus 8. And then you start subtracting more. So from 10 to 12, g of x is negative. And then that's the interval that you need.